Hello. Hello, everyone. We're waiting for people to all pile on here like a dog pile. Hopefully you can hear me okay. If you can, <clears throat> please say hello in the chat. Uh, say hi, where you're calling in from and uh, how you doing. And we got a, another great teaching week for you here. So looking forward to diving into that. But I want to make sure that you guys can hear me. So please say hello. I keep forgetting, Leanne, that there is that uh, that 20, is it 10 second or 20 second delay? Because no one's saying anything yet. I think it's like maybe 20. Yeah, add, add 20 to 10, you get 30, and that would be the number. Mm. It's a 30 second delay. Well, that explains everything. I, I, I just thought for a moment that you didn't love me anymore. <laughs> okay, David says hi. Uh, Randolph, hello. Hello, Randolph. How you doing? Uh, I know there's more of you out there than that because I'm seeing a lot of people in the room here. Uh, Sh Sharon calling in from Australia, no doubt. Good day. Um, either that or um, you just like to speak Australian. Um, so, all right. Who else is who else is with us today? Let's everybody say hello <clears throat> into the chat. Uh, we're gonna have um, we've got uh, 114 people coming in. So hello, 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 hello Ian. Hello, Ian. So if you want to open up and follow along with me, you just open up Celerator, and I'm going to share my screen right now. And hopefully this will be share the right screen. I'm really hoping this is. I'm going to make sure it's the right screen. And it should be. You should be seeing the screen go into oblivion. And let me know, Leanne, if you can see my screen now. Yep. Awesome. If you can zoom in just a tad, depending on what you're going to be showing, that would be good. Or helpful. Um, I can zoom in, yes, because uh, you really don't need to see any of this other part over here. I will do this, and it's not going to look as pretty, but it will be zoomed in. How's that, folks? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, obviously, as, as, as you guys know, Accelerators is, is a completely responsive platform. Um, we made this responsive back when responsive wasn't that big of a thing, it, back when mobile and responsive was just getting started, but uh, this is responsive. Um, meaning that if I make it bigger, everything still stays on the screen or smaller. So uh, step three, the big problem is where we're at today. We did vital connection last week. Hopefully you guys listened to that tutorial. So we pretty much set up, the, the, as far as the big problem, the bigger solution, there's not there's not new things there. Where the new things are going to come into step five is the grand offer. There's a couple of new things I want to go over with you when we get there. We were going to get, we're going to walk through this step by step to get clarity on exactly why you're wanting to do this, this section of the VSL and what it's for. Now. When you go to the big problem, you're going to click overview. You're going to, that's the very first thing you're going to do. Just watch that. It's only a three-minute video on what I call the conspiracy theory model or the conspiracy cycle. And I'm going to briefly cover what that is. Again, just reiterate some things and why this is very important. Now, before I get into that, let me just make this very clear. I am not suggesting that you need to do a, a whole conspiracy theory behind your video sales letter. And there's a lot of those out there. And some of them have done extremely well. You've got End of America. Uh, it's a $100 million a year video sales letter. Uh, my friend Craig Clements, who's an amazing copywriter, uh, wrote uh, one of the best conspiracy uh, VSLs I've ever seen in, in, um, uh, in another word, Ameri the American Parasite. Maybe the word America just needs to be in every video sales letter title. Maybe that's the secret to, to riches. But um, the American Parasite, uh, it, it ended up being, I think it ended up getting pulled off because they had too many problems with uh, with the claims they were making, but the story was really amazing. And the whole story was, uh, went into like a kind of a government in, in uh, government conspiracy of keeping, you know, basically feeding you the, the foods that would feed you the bad part of your bacteria in your gut. Very interesting, very compelling stuff. So, so that's an extreme version of the conspiracy cycle. <laughs> and I'm not suggesting that you go to that extreme. Um, what I am suggesting is that every single problem that you, that your customer is facing is two things. Ready? Number one is bigger than they think it is. We talked about this last week. The problem that your customer is facing is a lot larger than he or she thinks it is. And it's your job as a marketer to make sure that you elucidate how large it really is. Make it super clear that this is much more and powerful, but much bigger than you think it is. We talked about this last week, so I'm not, no need to go back over it. But you know, I, I made the problem of, for example, of selling with a video sales letter, uh, having a video sales letter, not having one is a bigger problem than oh, I just won't make as much money. You know, you can I, I expanded that out to no, you're gonna you're gonna lose the respect of the peer of your peers. You can lose affiliate sales because people won't send to you. You can actually you know not failing financially means you know letting your children down. They, they, it's a lot bigger problem, right? 
So, so that's the first thing in the big problem is you want to make the problem as big as you can. The, and with, with an ethical reason. You don't lie, you just make it big. You just make it as, as large as it really is. And number two, you always want to have, if at all possible, and 90% of the time it is possible, you always want to have a villain, something or someone to blame other than the, the customer. And I'm not saying, even though there's this thing called, it's not your fault, and it's right there. I'm not saying that you're gonna say, hey, listen, none of this is your fault, it's all the fault of X. I do this in a very ethical way, which you'll get in, I'll get into the copy in here in a moment, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But you wanna take some of the responsibility, if not a large part of it, off of your prospect or customer's shoulders. It's, in this case, it's your prospect shoulders, because if when you do that, number one, people listen a lot better when they don't feel guilty, okay? When you feel guilty, I mean, just think back to the time when you were a kid and, and you're being scolded by your parents and, and they're kind of scolding you. You're feeling really guilty and your head's down, you're like feeling really bad about it because you know you're guilty, okay? In this particular case, you know you're guilty. You're not hearing half of what they're saying. You're hearing a lot of blah, 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 you're a bad person, blah, 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 how could you do that? Or whatever, you know, not you're a bad person, but you know, you get the idea. Um, you're hearing a lot of blah, 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 you're not, because your mind is like really wrapped around its own guilt. When, if someone comes to you and goes, you know, this is really not working for you, but you know what? I'm going to tell you why it's not your fault. Hang with me. Your, your attention span is going to go radically up. So I add the, it's not entirely your fault. Just the word entirely is a big difference. It's not entirely your fault. In fact, you'll find out that who, when you find out who is to blame for this, you may be a little bit pissed off. You may be a little bit, and so now you see what I'm doing? I'm making the story much more entertaining to listen to, and all of a sudden your ears are perked up, like, oh, okay, so the fact that I don't have enough money in the bank, or that I don't have the relationship that I want, or that I am overweight, isn't all my fault? <laughs> so, so I make jokes about this, by the way, inside copy. I'll actually make a joke, and it's the only time I ever use humor inside of a video sales letter, or very rarely do I use humor inside of a video sales letter. But in this section, I will actually use a little bit of humor. Sometimes I'll say, look, it isn't entirely, you know, on a weight loss BSL, it isn't entirely your fault. Yes, the brownies are to blame. Okay, yeah, the pizza's not helping matters. Any. I got that. But that's not really what's driving your weight loss, your, your, your weight gain. So I'm, that's just a very subtle, like, yeah, we understand that, you know, eating four pizzas a day probably isn't helping matters. I mean, I wouldn't say that. That's a little bit too sarcastic. But it isn't really driven by that. <coughs> and again, I'm, I'm, I'm taking things that are completely factual. And I'll use weight loss and I'll use marketing as examples inside our tutorial so that you'll see what I'm talking about. But if you'll ask yourself this question, what other than my, my potential customer's personal responsibility, which is a part, obviously, what else is contributing to their failure at blank, to their lack of results in blank? Whatever you sell, whatever service you provide, whatever product you offer is offering a solution to blank, right? Whatever that is, what other reasons or what other cul villains, culprits, are contributing to this? So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to give you a couple of quick examples before. This is such an important part of this whole conspiracy cycle that I want to cover this before we actually get into the copy. So, an example of this, other than weight loss, might be, uh, let's, let's take finances. Let's say that you have a product that teaches people how to save for retirement. I'm making this up. It could be anything in the world. Saving for retirement. So, how else could that be anyone's fault but, but the person that didn't save the money, right? I mean, in, in the, if you get down to the black and white real world tax, I believe in personal responsibility to the, to the nth degree. In fact, I, I believe in hyper responsibility, which I'll talk to you about another time, meaning that you take, you take responsibility for things that technically aren't even your, it isn't even your fault. But I believe that you kind of co-create your reality along with other people. So you have to take a degree of responsibility. That level of responsibility is very evolved and it's not going to make you sales unless you're talking about things that are directly related to the metaphysical slash personal development world. Then it would probably be really good. But in the most cases, that's not going to work. So that's what I personally believe. That being said, every single thing that I've ever struggled with in my life, when I, when I, was, when I was obese, when I was broke, when I was, I can go down the line, there were always other contributing factors and this is what you're going to want to pull out. So for my example of saving money, I had the perfect role model in my father. He was a he was literally a saint when it came down to saving money. Preached it night and day to me. You know, just I never listened until I was like in my late thirties. I never listened at all. Um, so so obviously that that's what who else was to blame? 
And I started asking myself, why didn't I do this? And I started figuring out, listen, you know what the big part of this was? It's It was the part of the media. The media was bombarding us with all these images of what it was like in my 20s to be considered successful. Here's what it looks like to be successful in your 20s. And in order to have this, obviously, you're going to need a credit card. And I got duped. Okay, I'll take responsibility for getting duped. But the media did a very good sales job on me and convincing me that I need a credit card for almost every major department store. <laughs> you know, I need a credit card to go buy this car that I have to have, or buy, not buy a car, but to buy this, these clothes I need to look cool in. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> it's, not all, it's not entirely my fault. If I want to blame someone, I could totally blame Madison Avenue and the media because they have a billion plus advertising budget to indoctrinate very, very naive and gullible and, and impressionable people like myself into believing, oh, I need to go out and spend more money than I'm making. And another per another culprit in this whole, like, why don't I have enough money to retire in? Another culprit would definitely be um, the, the society that we've set up. Our society is a credit-rich society. In fact, get this, I'm going to just go on and on here. I, I promise I won't lecture you on credit. The funny thing is, it, you, in order to have really good credit score, you need to have bad credit practices. And anyone out there that is in finances or that ever had looked at credit score knows what I'm talking about. Like for example, it's you have to have a credit card, right? I don't. I hate credit cards now. I, I just prefer to rip them up. But you know, years ago, my, my accountant said you need to have at least two or three credit cards and just pay them down every month. It's it's an exercise in bad bad finances for me, right? In my mind, no, I just pay everything off, right? No, you can't have good credit that way. So the system is kind of rigged to set to entrap you, right? So don't completely beat yourself up over not saving money. The system is kind of set up for you not to save money. It doesn't really reward you for saving money. And on top of all that, there's so many high risk investments, you don't even know where to put your money. So I just I just came up with three things right there that are villains, that are part of a conspiracy. And when I say conspiracy, again, I don't mean a literal conspiracy like there's these greedy old guys sitting in a boardroom going, how are we going to trap all these people? Then that could probably, you could probably make that argument for financial stuff, but you know, you, it's, I'm not going to make that argument. I'm going to say, look, it's almost as if it's a conspiracy. It's almost as if, if, as if the world's kind of against you. So don't beat yourself up over this. It's not your fault. Now, I'm just telling the story, like I said, in a very broad spectrum. Do you see how much more powerful this is? When it comes down to saying, hey, you've got a real problem, and you're, the problem is you're not going to have enough money when you retire. And right now, you're probably feeling really guilty about that. Maybe you're feeling irresponsible. Maybe you feel as if you let your family down. Well, rest easy. I'm going to tell you why it's not entirely your fault that this is happening. In fact, you know, when I tell you who to blame for this, it's going to really surprise you. So do you think that that would maybe make somebody more apt to listen to you if you remove those feelings of guilt, shame, irresponsibility, whatever they may be feeling associated to not having the goals that they want your product for, taking that off their shoulders and replacing it with an interesting story of how, hey, you know, this is kind of set up. And what we're going to do at the end of the call today is take your questions and say, okay, uh, I don't think I have a conspiracy cycle. I don't think it's going to work for my product. I do this. And I'm going to put me to the test and we'll see if we can figure out ways to do it. Okay. So if you're thinking this doesn't apply to you, hang in there for a moment. So the overview is just simply going to tell you all about basically what I just told you, okay? Uh, so just, just watch that video. Um, so we're going to talk about what's called the big lie. There's one big lie right now that your prospect believes that is completely ruining his or her chance at achieving success at blank. So right now, do me a favor. If you know what that lie is, what's the number one lie? that your customers are buying into, your potential customers buy into, that they may believe is a good thing, okay? or But it's actually really, really bad. It's actually not working for them at all. If you know what that is, just type it in the, in the chat windows. Now, here's a couple of sample, some sample copy. I know it's hard to read because it's small, but you can just go into Accelerator and get this for yourself. Uh, the real problem is the fact that you've been lied to for years, okay? You've been lied to. This may surprise you. You've been lied to. Now, what's really interesting is you don't even tell them that what the lie is here. It's just that you're just setting up what's called the transition into this loop. You're going to tell them that they've been lied to for years. Now, go back to my financial examples. I would say you've been lied to for years. Who's been lying to you? The media. They tell you that you need to buy these things in order to be successful. The financial institutions. They make you. They 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 tell you that you have to have a credit card, and it's true. You actually do. 
but then they lie to you about how much the interest payments are and onward and so forth. See, we're setting up who is lying to me that's caused me not to succeed. That goes into what I call the loop, okay? So this loop is very simple. You're just gonna follow this, this exact pattern. And these are all in slides. So you can just pick and choose your slides inside Accelerator, right? So here's what you're gonna say. Um, it's all, it's, you can pick and choose your copy here. It's very, very simple. Uh, you may have heard or even believed at one point that you have to blank in order to blank. So you may, you may, you may have heard, maybe you even believed at one point that in order, in, or, <coughs> in order to save money, you, now I'm going to go into other kind of lies now. In order to save money, you have to give up all the things that you love to do. You have to live like a Spartan. You know, you might as well get used to eating Roman noodles. Okay. Well, that's not true. So that's just simply you're just saying you may have believed at some point. Now, if I wanted to use my example I gave earlier of like I, I've been able to save money because um, I, you know, you may have believed at one point that you need to have a certain amount of possessions and you're you need to own a certain amount of possessions, a certain car, a certain set of clothes in order to, to actually be perceived as successful. Well, here's why that's a lie. And then you can go into like you would go into the evidence of why that's a lie. Um, you know, studies have shown that confidence is more important than, than, than what you wear, et cetera, et cetera. That's all that is. So you would just follow this exact loop right here. You would describe the lie, you do use an anchor drop term, that's all in this slides, description of it, label it as false, give the results of believing the lie, and tell them that's not what you desire for them. That's just the simple loop that you're gonna do. Again, this is all in the copy here, and you'll just follow the exact copy word for word. But I'm giving you the more, in this tutorial, I'm giving you more of an overview of why we're doing this, okay? We're doing this because we're saying, you've been, you bought into a lie, Here's why the lie isn't true. And if you keep going in this lie, it's going to end up in a very bad situation. So now inside of this, you may be wondering like, how does, how do you work the conspiracy into this? Well, this is where I personally do it. So what I do in here, and this is the slight change to what you'll see in Accelerator. This is why we're doing these in, in this advanced teaching. What I do is I say, you know, one of the biggest lies I bought into, that almost ended me, I get, let's pretend that I wrote a financial product, that almost ended me in, in bankruptcy. The biggest lies I, I, I ever bought into is the lie that you have to have you know, a, a certain credit score or that you have to have three credit court cards in order to have healthy credit. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would say that and say, well, you know what the truth is? You only need to have one and it's a certain kind of credit card and here's how you do this. So I would just tell them that that's the lie and this is what I believe and this is what this is what's helped me lead, lead me away from being able to save money. I said, now see, this is where this is where the conspiracy kicks in. Now, what they're not telling you is that when you do get a credit card, your addiction to spending goes up on average 30 to 45 percent. So I don't know what the stats are, but th those would be easy stats for a financial person to know. You know, if you have a credit card in your hand, the odds of you spending more money drastically increase. So if you're spending more money than you're making, what are your chances of saving money? Exactly. There's a better way to do this. So it's this is where you just go right from here. That's why it you not having enough money to retire. It's not your response. Your, it's not your fault. It's not entirely your fault is the way I word it now. Then I say, but it's your ethical responsibility now that you know this is the truth. Yeah. Now you can go into other things too. Now I'm not a financial expert, but if I were, I would go into many other reasons why you haven't been able to save money. But let's talk about weight loss. That's something I am an expert about. So one of the lies, uh, let's talk about the lie. You know, one of the reasons why, and I'm going, if you highlight, you'll, if I'm highlighting, you can literally listen to me talk and I'll speak the copy right over it. I say, <coughs> one of the reasons you've been struggling with weight loss all these years is because you've been lied to when it comes down to the most important part of losing weight. And it may surprise you when you find out what this lie is. Now I'm gonna go right into the lie loop here. Okay, so the lie is that you need to count your calories. I'm just, I can give you 20 lies, but let's say that, or let's give a more provocative lie. The lie is that you actually need carbohydrates to be healthy. And so you've probably been looking at the boxes and reading, choosing things that are low fat, shooting things with healthy healthy grains in them. You've been probably listening to the government tell you that you should eat 11 servings of grain a day. Well, what if I told you that was a conspiracy? What if I told you the government makes a lot of money off the subsidy of grains? And what if I told you that you only need a fraction of the carbohydrates that most media outlets are telling you that you need, but there's a trillion dollar industry in carbohydrate eating 
This is why you've been told this lie. That's why it's not your fault entirely that you're struggling with your weight. You've heard this ever since you were a little kid. Eat everything on your plate. Be sure to eat your healthy grains. In actuality, those grains are causing you to become more insulin resistant and that's contributing to your weight loss and that's why it's not all your fault. But now that you know this, it's going to become your responsibility to do something about it. The next section we haven't gone over is blame this. And listen, if you want to get mad at something, if you want to blame someone, don't blame yourself. Blame the media. Blame the government's insane institution of my plate. Blame the lunchrooms that you, I can just list many, many things you can blame. You know, uh, bl bl blame, if you were like me, you went to public school and I bet you had a really crappy lunch. <laughs> you know, if you ate at a public school, you had really bad choices. You had vending machines, soda machines. You t grew up addicted to sugar and carbs. So blame that. Don't blame yourself. When I tell someone not to blame themselves, it's a big, big thing. So the big truth is where you're going to make the problem even bigger. Okay? This is the part where I really like to do this. So the truth is blank. And I'd say the truth is you don't need as many carbohydrates as you are. But here's what's going to happen to you if you continue down this path. It's not that you're just going to gain weight. It's that you're slowly going to cause every organ in your body to fail. Over 80% of known illnesses are directly attributed to inflammation. And most inflammation is caused by excessive carbohydrate and sugar intake. So you could literally be eating your way into an early grip. See, I've, I just made the problem much bigger than, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Now, I just did it very quickly off the top of my head, but I know this industry. I know this field very well. You know your field very well. This is the variations that you have inside this whole big problem cycle. So now you can also, by the way, when, when you go into <coughs> the big lie transition, you can talk about like there's a big lie you've been told and it's keeping you from losing weight. You can go into it there and, and it's more than you just losing weight. It's it's we're going to talk about your health. We're going to be talking about the health of your children. You pass these traits down to your children, et cetera. You can put all that into the transition part, too. I like to do it at the big truth section. I like to put in like why it's like much bigger than they think it is. OK. The, the, that's that's the whole deal. So <clears throat> then finally, you're going to go into what's called, you're, uh, you're going to open a loop. That's an NLP term, meaning you're going to open something up. And you're going to say, now that you know blank, so whatever you just told them, now that you know blank, now that you know the problem, that your goal has been held back for years due to these lies, I, it's ready. Now we're going to dive right into the tip today. And this is the most, this is the open loop. Now that you know that blank is actually a lie, and that your real problem is fill in the blank. We're going to dive into the three re three ways that you can solve this problem today. And the most important tip I'm going to give you is the last tip. So you're going to want to pay attention. Now, all I did there was I opened a loop. I said the most important tip is the last tip. So pay attention. So if I have three tips for you, if I told you right now, I have three tips that will help you make double your income in 30 days. I've got three tips for you. Do you want to hear them? Okay, great. Well, listen, I need to tell you something. The last tip is by far and away the most important. In fact, you can do the first two tips and they're great, but they're, they're nothing if you don't do the third tip. How many of you would stop listening after the second tip? No one, right? I, and no one that's interested in this would stop listening. So what have I done with that open loop? I've ensured that during the largest part of my teaching, the largest part of the video sales letter is probably going to be your teaching other than your clothes. Okay. Your clothes is the longest. You're, you've ensured that they're going to listen all the way to that last tip. And that's why that's so important. Now I use three tips. You could use three, you could use, I wouldn't use like more than five and I definitely, you could use one, but I don't like one. I, I prefer to give people like three quick things they can do. And the reason why we can, we're going to go into the psychology of that next week, but there's a reason why, because you're going to appeal to, to diff three different areas of psychology in how people learn things. But the most important one is the third one, and that's the open loop. So you've opened the loop, you've, you've set in their mind that, hey, when I tell you the third thing, that's going to be really huge, but I'm not going to tell you right now. <laughs> you have to listen. So that's the subtle genius inside this little cycle right here, this big problem cycle. So we're going to recap it, and I'm going to take some questions. Uh, to recap, number one, you have to make the problem bigger than they think it is. Now, you can do that, and, and like I said, uh, you, you can also do that, by the way, there's a place to do that inside, inside the Vital Connection. When you go into the nightmare story, 
whenever your story, you go in your nightmare story, you talk about the worst thing, the, when you hit rock bottom, you can actually say in there, and that can, that, this can happen to you. That's why, it's, that's why weight loss is more important than how you look in the mirror and fitting into your jeans and hitting your, looking good at your high school reunion. Do you see how important this is? This is a matter of life and death. This is a matter of, you, you can do it there too. Uh, I like to do it uh, there, and I also like to do it here, <coughs> right here. So the, in the big truth. Here's the truth that you, you can now that you know the lie. Here's the truth. And here's why that's so important. Because if you keep believing this lie, here's what's going to happen to you. And that is a scary, scary thing. You're, people are going to get, you're going to get people's attention when you tell them, hey, you know, saving money. Let's go back to my financial analogy. Saving money is, is more, it's more than just, it's more than just making sure that you retire at ease. It, believe it or not, it's bigger than that. Then I would go into all the, the really scary things that can happen if you don't have enough money. For example, did you know that over 50% of people over the age of 65 will die of a needless medical condition because they cannot afford hospital care? They did not save enough money to stay alive. Wow, I just made that problem really big, didn't I? Now, I don't know the exact stats of that, but th that's actually, I, I know there's some truth to that. I don't know what exactly it is, but I'm giving you exa examples. Same thing can go for weight loss. Same thing can go for selling things online. Why you need something to help you make more money online because it's more than about money. It's about freedom. It's about you know inspiring your kids. It's about you know down the line. So I'm making the problem bigger, and that's all done in the big truth. So that's the first thing that the big problem does. The second problem thing it does is it takes the responsibility somewhat, not totally, but somewhat off their shoulders. And you want to do that so that people can listen to you. You know, if you think that, that, hey, listen, you should have been having a kick-ass video sales letter, what are you thinking? I mean, yeah, you should have this like working for you. Of course, that's the reason why that you're not making money. I mean, yeah, it's totally your fault. You're just lazy. <laughs> Who's going to listen to me, right? Well, that's also, that's also not true. It's not your fault. You might not have even known what a video sales letter was until you heard me talk about it. Or you might have said, you know, you were running a business and I've been too busy to create one. Those are all valid reasons for not having a video sales letter. Uh, a lot of reasons I can think of. You know, a, a, one of the biggest, in my personal, it's not your fault talking about Accelerator. I say one of the reasons, if you don't want to blame anyone, blame greedy marketers that are out to sell you these ridiculous traffic programs and social media programs that are designed for people who already have sales pages that work, but they don't tell you that. <laughs> they just tell you that, oh yeah, you need social media. Oh yeah, you need traffic. Yeah, that's assuming that you have a freaking sales page that works. If you don't have a sales page that works, all the social media and traffic in the world isn't gonna do you jack shit. It's not, it's not gonna help you at all. It's a complete waste of money. But they don't make money by telling you that. So if you want to blame anyone, blame those guys. Now, see, I just wrote the copy there. Now, I, I didn't, I'm not writing copy. I'm actually just speaking. But this is pretty good copy. You know, I'm just telling a story. I'm just telling you why those, those programs are good, but they're not what you need right now. You need to focus on your sales copy. But I just made, <coughs> so I made this conspiracy into like, hey, blame the marketers. But you still have to take responsibility. So now that you know that, maybe you feel a little bit better. It's not your fault, but it is your responsibility now that you know the truth. And I love that line. I've, I, I was the guy that wrote that line. It's been used in about 10,000 videos so ever since we wrote it. But that is the truth. It's not your fault, but it's now your responsibility. And most ethical people want to take responsibility. Remember, we're talking about ethical persuasion, not unethical persuasion. Unethical persuasion is like, hey, it's not your fault at all. You know, just push this button and cure all your, cure all your problems. And that's unethical, right? Ethical people, the people that you want as your customers are going to be people that go, you know what? Yeah, okay, I'm going to take responsibility for this on some level. And people in general kind of shirk responsibility, but the people that you want as customers, they'll take a little bit of it at least. And some of them will take a lot of it. Some of them are actually blaming themselves too much. And that's the big, the big thing with weight loss, by the way, the, the industry that I came from and the industry that um, pioneered video sales centers, uh, I wrote the first one in weight loss, there's so much there's so much beating oneself up in, in, in the weight loss field. I, I can't tell you the degree of which people will beat the crap out of themselves and they will literally get into a state of massive depression over, I, I just have no discipline. I'm just, I'm lazy. I'm, I'm, I must be just totally worthless human being. I've heard people say those kind of things because they can't figure out their weight loss. And then when I tell them, oh yeah, it's just because you're eating this and you think it's healthy. It's not your fault. You've been lied to. Do you see how that just relieves all that guilt? Oh, well, maybe I can do this. And this is where I want to leave you. You want to leave your audience at this point with this one overriding thought. Hey, maybe, maybe this guy or this girl has the answer I'm looking for. Maybe I can do this.
Maybe it's not too late for me to do this. And then you start getting into the tips. I want to show you exactly how. Do you see how much their momentum has picked up? Hey, maybe I can do this. I'm going to listen to this guy's tips or this girl's tips. Big difference in the psychology. That's why this section is so important. It's one of the sections that honestly gets overlooked in a lot of video sales letters. I think it's crucial. So, <coughs> excuse me, that is the big problem. And now we're going to take your questions because I said, hey, throw your conspiracy cycle, or throw your product at me or your service at me and we'll see if there is, if I can help you find the conspiracy angle inside of it, that you can use this, this tactic so you can take some of that burden off of your customer's shoulders. Because again, I keep wanting, I want to emphasize this one more time. You know, most people are good people in my personal worldview. Most people, when it comes right down to it, they're good people. Not everyone. Not everyone. As John Cougar said a long time ago, and some people are no damn good, right? But most people, I think, at the heart are really good people. And most people want to do what it takes to improve their life in some way, form, or fashion. I'm not saying there aren't lazy people out there. I'm saying that most people, I think, will that, that will do something to improve their life, whether it's improve their dating life, their financial life, their marketing life, whatever it may be. So that's who you're talking to. And if you talk to that person with this, listen, I understand why you're struggling with this, and it's not entirely your fault. Let me, maybe this will like ring some bells. Did this happen to you? And they go, yeah, that did happen to me. So I can't tell you from the, now I'm going to share one last thing then I'm going to get your questions. The, where this came from, a lot of people ask me, where did this come from psychologically speaking? It actually came from, to be honest with you, it came from me uh, when I was in my 20s working with my girlfriend who at the time had been the victim of sexual assault. And she blamed herself. So I, this, this was one of my first exposures to this. And I went to her counselor and her counselor relieved 10 or 15 years of agony and suffering of this poor girl when he was able to, to actually get through to her that this has nothing to do with you. This was not your fault. In this case, this was completely not her fault, right? Not even 1% her fault. Um, but the problem is she believed that she was to blame for this. And so she carried that blame around. Now that's an extreme example, but then I started thinking as I, as I took that lesson forward, I started thinking, how many things do we do as human beings that we're struggling with? You know, like I really want to be more disciplined when it comes to doing cardio or whatever. And I just don't want to do it. I wake up and I just don't want to do it. So it's all my fault, right? Well, maybe. But what if I could take that same psychological principle that this wonderful psychiatrist was using and said, you know, hey, hey, it's not your fault and got her to relieve that stress so she could hear the solutions. She could hear how she could heal from it. What if I could take that same principle and apply it to marketing or apply it to sales in any way? And taking the taking that it's far less usually unless you're talking about you know something as serious as sexual assault but uh, it's for most people it's far less you know severe and remove those feelings of guilt remove those feelings of beating oneself up just enough where they still have the responsibility they still have to move forward she still had to move forward with healing she still had to heal herself so he could literally say look it's your responsibility now to do to do the work to do the meditation to do the forgiveness whatever you know all the things he told her to do that's still her responsibility. But now she doesn't have the fault on top of it. Now, that's what I'm trying to get convey to you. And that's what I want you to convey to your customer. I think if you do this, you'll see the humanity in it. You'll see that you're doing them a great service by removing a lot of that, if not all of it, and then still leaving them with the responsibility to take action. That's very, very important. So hopefully, I, I just really have wanted to do this for a long time. I've taught many, many workshops on this particular issue, uh, mostly in high-end masterminds and you know, to these to, to people that pay a lot of money to come see me talk, um, and, and to a lot of high-level marketers to convey the importance of this. But this is why I really want to do it with you guys, because I, I don't think that th this one section could have been done, in my opinion, the training could have been even better. I, it just got clearer on it as the years went by. So now it's now it's better. <laughs> now you can hear it. Now there's more here. And hopefully you can sink your teeth into it and really dive into the section and take it seriously. So uh, Leanne, we're going to go back over to the, the Hangouts now. And I'll stop sharing my screen so it doesn't go into oblivion. And I want to take uh, take your, your questions. So let's dive in. And let me take something to drink so my throat... <coughs> I won't, I won't cough um, in your ears. All right. Well, the first question we got is from Jeff. He says, um, I read a post on the copy posse. One of our posse brothers said ClickBank made him take the enemy out of his VSL. Is ClickBank not allowing this anymore? 
And uh, I just went into the copy posse and just to give you some context, mm -hmm. the product was a juicing product. Mm -hmm. And so it was in the health market. Mm -hmm. um, what was the enemy? And I'll tell you, I mean, um, I, I have you know, the most, most video sales letters on ClickBank are, are either um, written through Celerator or I wrote them. So, so he's, <laughs> let's see. In Copy Posse, Mark says, any slides that reference my villain, um, all slides that refer to anything about how the media has misled us about anything referring to my product, uh, a juicer, a weight loss pro program through juicing. Mm. So it's the I, media, I guess. I have never heard that. I mean, I, I use the media all the time. Um, so unless you're using something, or they were using something very specific, like, if they used Fox News or whatever, something specific, then yeah, I could see why they would say you have to take that down. But but no, I've never heard of that. In fact, um, in fact, if you, I, I think you're, I don't, I think this is not your product. Your product is somebody else that you've seen. Is that correct? Leanne, was that correct? Um, is it, yes, it was. He was commenting. It wasn't his product, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would. I would love to know whose product it is and. I would call them. I I I'd call ClickBank tomorrow and ask. Them. I've never heard ClickBank t say take off the villain. I've never heard that before. Um, it could have been. I mean, again, it depends on how it was written. So, for example, if if this guy said, you know, um, all of your weight loss woes are the fault of the media, then yeah, then then they're making a false claim. But if you if it's written the way this is written, then no, I, I've never heard that before. <laughs> so that would yeah. be really interesting if that was. And my my suggestion would be like to to go to a higher rep. I figured, you know, I figured you didn't have enough context, but um, let's go to the next one. So Noah asks, John, I have a product aimed at the law of attraction market. Would mm -hmm. this be a good big lie? The biggest, most insidious lie is that you can just sit on the couch and force the universe to give you everything you want without you having to do anything to get it. Um, yes, and uh, that's a market I know very well. My, my only concern with that, Noah, would be that um, – uh, be careful with the word insidious. <laughs> um, again, I, I just I try to like make sure that you that oh guys, I'm going to give you a great tip here. I'm going to type a message here. I think this will go to everyone. If this doesn't, Leanne, can you just let me know? Um, go to. I'll go there now. Otherwise, you'll miss me. Uh, go there. Um, did that come out, Leanne? <laughs> it did. Yep. Okay, great. Readability-score.com. Uh, yeah. So when you're through with your video sales letter, copy all your go, go to the print slides feature and copy everything into um, uh, it'll copy everything into your browser. Click and paste, paste into the readability score, and look at what your readability score is. Um, I was saving this one for um, later, but this is one of the best tips ever. You want a readability score that's at least seventy five percent or above. Uh, seventy percent if you're to a high level market, meaning you're you're going to you know. Really well educated people. Um, I like to keep the uh, the grade level, the the flesh Kincaid level. I like to keep that uh, definitely below seventh grade. Uh, I ch I aim for four and five. I mean, I've written a whole video sales that was actually under. It was in the four point five grade level. And you think, oh my gosh, it must be a you know a video sales letter for you know for kids or for you know people that are not quite there. No, it doesn't read that way at all. It's just using a lot of. You know, you don't use a lot of big, big words like insidious. I, I actually love the word insidious as a as a writer. Um, but so, yeah, just be careful with that. <clears throat> you could squeeze it in there like if your rest of your letter didn't have, you know, such lofty terminology. Uh, but the lie itself, so this would be my thing. And, and um, I can't, I probably won't be able to give everyone this kind of detailed advice. But hey, you know what? Consider yourself fortunate. Um, only because my wife is in the, in the in that market. And I've written um, for many people in that market. And uh um, uh, I was asked to be in the secret, believe it or not, um, a long time ago. Uh, Joe Vitale is a friend of mine. Um, Bob is as well, and and um, it's funny uh, because I, <laughs> I I I couldn't be in it, but um, but I know that the one thing that that most people in that market, especially Joe, talks about is that lie that you can sit there on your hands and kind of wish things into existence. So if you say it, put a spin on that lie. It is a great lie. There's no doubt about it. But and you've got a great villain built in. You know what the villain is? The villain could be the secret. <laughs> the villain could actually be, you know, the movie The Secret, or you know that that in all these other guys that are talking about law of attraction as wishful thinking. 
You know, it's literally wishful thinking. And, and I, I, Bob talks a lot about this. I'm sure you know the people. I'm going to say Bob. You know who I'm talking about. Um, but um, excuse me, I'm sucking on a, a cough drop, so I don't cough. Um, but yeah, so just make sure your lie is is something that people haven't heard before. In, in that, in, in the more unusual the lie is, the better. Like for example, you, you could say one of the biggest lies I've heard is is uh, is I'm just making this up. This is not true. Uh, when it comes down to, to the law of attraction, is that that you should be standing up, or that you should be sitting down when you're doing your your visualization uh, or your meditation. Actually, that's a complete lie. It won't work. The universe literally goes to sleep when you do that. It only works when you stand up. Uh, <laughs> I'm just making this up, obviously. Um, but you see where I'm going with that. You want to make sure that your lie has a lot of impact. But so that is a good lie in structure, though a very good lie in structure. So great question. <laughs> Um, thanks, Noah. Um, so, next question. I saved a lot of room for questions tonight, guys. So, let's see. Next question is from Sharon. And hey, that's cool about you um, almost being in the secret, though. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, I got asked. Yeah, yeah, I did get asked. Yeah. All right. So Sharon asked, my product being I should kind of run the same in the same um, niche, sort of. My product brings a strong mindset to ambitious people who can't get ahead financially. So many people have hang-ups about money, fret about it, think other people are lucky, and they don't see the opportunities in front of them. Mm. Uh, I fix this. So a villain there? Oh my gosh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, hey, that's a first of all great product. If I'm if I'm hearing you correctly, you're kind of helping them find the 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 gold that slipped between the the couch cracks. You know, it, it's it's right there. You just you're just kind of missing it. You're stepping over it. Um, so. So a couple of villains that come to mind for that one. Uh, uh, number one would be you could say, and, and I could, I, I don't know enough about what you do to say if this would be right or wrong, but you, you'll get the idea um, that you could say that, that that traditional old world. I would like the old school, the old world way of doing things. The old way of doing things was that you had to set aside ten percent of your earnings every month to save money. Well, that's a lie, and if you bought into that, it, it, it doesn't work. And here's why it doesn't work. You know, a lot of the things that, that a lot of the money that you're looking for is actually right in front of you. It's already there. You don't need to set anything aside. You just need to open your eyes and see this in a different way. Um, so, so another possible villain for this could once again we could go back down to you know the, the villain of, of of how our credit how how money is how our culture views money and credit. So you could say you know one of the biggest uh, back to my fictitious example, which may work for you, is one of the reasons that you may be struggling financially is because uh, because you bought into the bought into the, the lies of, of credit card debt or something like that. So so you could go into that world too. You know that that would be the villain. Let me know if that rings true for you anyway. And if you have any more things you can tell me about what you do, uh, I might be able to find something more specific. Okay, next question. All right. Well, we're waiting for Sharon. Uh, next question would be from Teddy. He has an info product teaching battery reconditioning. Um, he says it's a dry subject. Our competitors on ClickBank don't use the big lie, it's not your fault. Do you think this might be over the top for such a dry subject, a subject that doesn't hurt emotionally tear the customer? Uh, we could make the villain energy companies, but we're still worried about it being over the top. Mm, that's a really okay. This is the this is the question I was hoping to get. <laughs> this is like pick some subject that you would think, man, this will never work. Okay, so I, I just need to know, and maybe Leanne, you can answer this. Um, are you talking about like like uh, like if my if my AA batteries go dead, that you you have a product that kind of recharges those batteries, so I don't have to throw them away? Is that what you mean? I think he does. I mean, battery reconditioning sounds. That sounds like it. But I'll, I'll wait for him to type that in. Yeah. Let Let me know if that's what it is. Yes, he says yes. So okay. Got it. Okay. So, so this is okay. So, um, yeah, you're you're right in the sense that that this does not have. There's not a lot of emotional pull here and, and all that stuff. Um, so, so probably your angles are, listen, you can save a lot of money, you can do this, and this is also very good for the environment, obviously you're throwing batteries away, that's m mostly, you know, I'm sure you have an environmental slant on this. Um, but so, but here's the way that you would have to phrase it. You'd have to say like, do you realize that, in, in, in I would love to see the stats on this, do you realize that you are wasting X amount of money, uh, and just to give, give this large dollar figure, by not recharging your batteries? I know that sounds crazy, but here's the here's the, the way this works. 
the average person uses, I'm making this, I'm totally making this up, dude. So if, if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm sorry. But the average person uses about 24 different d sources of batteries in, in their life. Your batteries in your keyboard, batteries in your this, batteries in your remote control, et cetera. And those batteries go off once every two months. And you replace those batteries, blah, blah, blah. The average cost of batteries in the household ends up being about $70 a year. Multiply that times 30 years and you end up with this big figure. Okay, I I'm just making this up, okay? But you start with that big figure. And it's kind of shocking, right? Like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm wasting this much money. I'm going to tell you how you can save that much money, and at the same time, you can save your environment. Now, then you, the, 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 then the big problem, the villain would be, look, look, if you didn't know about this, this is totally not your fault. You know, you know, blame blame guys like Duracell. Blame the battery companies. Blame the car, the commercials that you see all the time. You know, that's just you see this all the time. Or here's another great, great one. Uh, blame, blame. I love this one actually. Blame the grocery stores and com, blame convenience stores. Where do you get most of your batteries? Most people get their batteries at convenience stores. And where are the batteries always located? Right at the front when you check out. And they know this because you're going, oh crap, I need batteries. Well, you know, you don't need batteries. You need to know how to recharge your batteries, but they put this stuff right where you can see it. So if you want to blame anyone, blame the convenience store, blame 7-Eleven. You know? <laughs> so do you see where I'm going? Does that work? Okay. If that works, say yes, that's, that's cool. But that's where I go. All right. Okay. So uh, okay. next. next that, that's pretty funny, by the way. 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven's and Sonic's. It's all your fault. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Oh, you're welcome, Teddy. Yeah, I, 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 by the way, I actually really love that. That uh, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of richness in that. As far as like the, when you said it's not a very emotional topic, um, the challenge of a copywriter, and I'm not asking you to be one. I'm asking you to use my copy, is to try to find what's the emotional hook for that. And I can give you one right now, just because you seem like a cool dude. Uh, I'll give you one right now. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'll give everyone if I can. Um, the emotional hook is. I get so fucking frustrated, excuse my French, when I my batteries run out on my remote control or my mouse, right in the middle of something. Okay, I'm right in the middle of watching Game of Thrones and my batteries go out. And you're trying to ch turn up the volume and nothing's happening. How, how many times has that happened to you? Uh, everyone's gonna say, yeah, it's happened to me. How many times have you been moving around or your mobile mouse, maybe you've got a mobile mouse and, and this fails, or whatever else is common use of batteries, you know, and it goes out. It's like, ah, oh, I'm right in the middle of a train of thought and this goes out. So. It's not a big emotional thing, but it's frustration. So I'd say, and the most frustrating thing of all is when you go to find, you go to get your batteries and you're out of freaking batteries. It's like this happens all the time. So I ended up, I used to end up stockpiling batteries. I'd end up with batteries and, and you know, like in, I couldn't, and then we'd move and I couldn't find them. I, I, you know, like right now, do you know where your batteries are? Most people don't. <laughs> so how would you just go into like the frustration angle? like? You know, look, I'm going to put an end to this frustration by giving you the simplest way ever that you never have to buy batteries again, you know, or whatever the case may be. So, so just think about that. Cause when I was thinking about what the frustrate, what, what, what the emotional thing would be for that, it would be like, it's frustration. I just ran into this two days ago. I was, I was working at my mouse. I was about to have a call and uh, I have a wireless mouse and my mouse died on me. And I was like, I can't make the call. I literally can't make Skype go click. So I'm like, I'm going to, I'm, I'm having to figure out how to use a keyboard to get over there. I'm going to be late to the call. Cause I can't use my mouse. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, so hey. yeah, Drew, Drew said, I can read this. I had wireless yeah. mouse batteries go out in the middle of a trade costing me serious money. Drew, that's awesome. Uh, Teddy, if you can't, if you, I totally would use that. Like, you know, you know, I, 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 I what one guy I know actually lost, you know, thousands because his mouse went out in the middle of a day trade. I love that. I love that. Now you're thinking <laughs> awesome. Okay. So next question. We're rolling. That was, that was pretty good. Leave it to you to find the emotional hook in batteries. I'm going to find it in everything. That's my job, baby. <laughs> yep. Yep. Bring yep. It. <laughs> All right. Here's, uh, here's Anne. She says her market is family caregivers, mostly women 45 to 65, who are caring for aging and elderly parents. Mm. My product helps them identify the challenges they, they could face so that they can prepare as much as possible and find time, oh, or still find time for themselves and their own families. Wow. Okay. Uh, thank you, Anne, for doing something that is one of the most uh, amazing things I've heard. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I'm very sympathetic to that. I, my mom died of dementia, so I uh, uh, talk about someone that understands that from a position of having to deal with it and having to cope with it. Um, and it's not easy. So yeah. Um, so thank you for what you do. That being said, uh, 
the, okay, so it's very, very, that's, that's a very, very interesting uh, product market. So, so if I'm understanding you correctly, um, you're talking to women, mostly women, um, 45 to 65, and they're, they're the ones that are caring for their own aging uh, parents. Is that correct? In other words, they're not, they're not uh, hospice. They're not wanting to be a hospice worker. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, uh, and um, yeah. So you, you and I have a lot in common. It's not not an easy thing to go through, as I'm sure you know. Um, but uh, that being said, my uh, we kept my mom alive ten extra years with changing her nutrition, and uh, she didn't repeat herself at all for the nine of those ten years. So pretty amazing what you can do with supplementation, nutrition, and uh, some you know uh, someone that wanted to stay alive. So that's awesome. But uh, but my market. Uh, th okay, I'm reading. I'm reading. I now I can see your your so I can read it here. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm by what you're saying, it takes. I take it that, that yeah, that is the it's their their parents, their own parents that you're helping them to get ready for. Um, so inside the big problem, one of the things that you would would probably be something that you would say is one of the biggest lies that you've heard is that you have to put your parent into a nursing home. It's like a default thing to do, and I'm assuming that there might be some part of what you what you talk about where that isn't true until at, at a certain point and so maybe you say the truth of the matter is is that um you know that's a that can actually accelerate their 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 death it can literally make them because when you take them out of the home that they're most comfortable in so matt that could be the big lie and one of the things that that could be the the villain behind that lie um, is, is honestly, I, I go, I go, I go to the media a lot for, 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 for villains and stuff, but yeah, going to like, when you look at the, you look at television shows and you look at things like that, you don't see a whole lot of like elderly parents who are struggling living in the house of a, you know, a relatively young, still working family. You don't really see that. So we haven't been given really good role models in the 21st century for this. And you could say, there's another thing you could say, and sorry to go on a roll here, but I'm going to go on a roll with everybody if I have to, because I'm, I'm on a roll tonight. Um, you know, 200 years ago, this wasn't even an issue. Uh, to, you, everyone, the, the, you know, no one you know, kicked their, their, their elders out of their house. It was, it was part of the culture, right? And we grew out of that. And that's not your fault that the culture changed. It's not your fault that, that you know, that, that the industrial revolution happened. It's not your fault that, that, that you know, things have changed. So if you're beating yourself up, but, but this is a great place to put it. Look, you may be really beating yourself up over not knowing what to do and wanting to help your mom or your dad. And you just don't know what to do. And there are some situations where you have to get help from professionals. But I'm going to help you transition to that. So don't blame yourself. You know, if anything, just blame the blame the blame how our culture has changed. Our culture has radically changed to where we're not as uh, giving, and uh, our culture is just not set up to to give uh, more to our to our elders as they as they used to be. So, um, if tell me if that helps at all, if that resonates at all, I just want to make sure that that sets well with you. So, um, so okay. Yeah, and Anne also says um, she she would want to blame big pharma as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, because a lot of medications make them worse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. Am I, uh, yeah. Okay. So, and obviously you know a lot more about this than I do. If, if, by all means, if that's, if, you know, if you, I know that to be true from certain things, but I don't know it to nearly to your extent. If, if that's true, which I'm assuming it is by all means, that's a, that's an excellent villain for what's causing the problem. It's not necessarily for, you know, for the, the, the fault. I know cause I, you know, I was hit, I was there. I've been through this. You, where you're going, I don't know. I have any idea how to take care of someone with dementia, and I, I don't. I, I don't have. I have a full time career. What do I do? And you're probably beating the crap out of yourself for this. And you might have gone through this too, and with your dad. I mean, uh, at some point, you have to wonder. You know, I, I, at some point, I got to the point where I couldn't. It was impossible. In fact, they were telling me, "Look, it is unethical to even try. You, you're not trained in this." You know, and so I. But I went through a lot of you know beating myself up over it. You know, it wasn't in my first choice by, at all. But um, so there's a lot of stuff in there, and I would talk to your your market is I'm sure you know is really going through agony. I mean, they're going through the loss of their 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 parent of one thing, but also they've got kids of their own. You know, they've got a they've got a career, they've got a family, they've got a husband and wife, they've got kids, they've got their own set of responsibilities. How do you balance that? If you can help relieve some of the 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 pain that they're feeling and some of the guilt while giving them really good answers, that's that's the magic here. And then if you want to say inside the conspiracy theory, like, look, you know, there's another thing that's going on here, and it's a lie you've been told, and that medication is the cure for everything. It's not. In fact, sometimes it can make it a lot worse. So that would work really well too. So thanks, Sam.
Um, I see something from George here, um, uh, Leon. He said, yeah, "Elaborate." George is asking if you know if ClickBank reviews every VSL. Like, do they watch every single one and review them? Um, maybe it's a different George, or maybe it's the same George. Um, George said, "Could you elaborate on the secret being the villain?" Uh, most people in that market believe in the secret, and I think it would be offend them. Yeah, yeah. I, I was kind of kidding when I said that, George. Um, what I mean is, is um, to be specific, is people's misinterpretation of the secret. You know, like after the secret came out, all these kind of wannabes jumped on that bandwagon, and they turned it into. Because if you if you watch, and I'm sure you have, you watch the secret. They're not. If you watch it with, if you watch it kind of flippantly, you could take away like, oh, I just have to kind of wish things into existence. But that's not what. That's certainly not what Bob believes, and that's certainly I, I, that's not what uh, Joe is talking about. Um, they're talking about like something that's a lot more serious, right? There's something they're, they're actually talking about what they believe is a law, a uh, universal law. So I would just say that that the 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 villain would be people that kind of took the ideas behind this and turned it, tried to turn it into like some cosmic vending machine. Uh, I actually used that phrase before, and it was years ago. So feel free to use it. That you know, basically turn the universe into a cosmic vending machine. You know, you push the button, you 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 insert your wish, you push a button, and out comes a pot of gold. Uh, that's the villain. It's these guys saying all you have to do is think wishful thoughts. So, so you don't have to name the secret. You can say that, but they did. They took the they took the stuff they were talking about in the secret, and then they turned it into, you know, something something far more insidious, <laughs> you know, and something far something not good. So I would use that. So uh, um, okay. So I'm sorry. Uh, as far as as far as uh, does ClickBank review every VSL? Uh, yes and no. They they will review their script. Most of the reps will ask for the video sales letter and they'll watch the first 10 minutes of it. You know, um, they'll watch it for claims, but most smart reps will ask for your script. And yes, they will go over your script. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I hate to tell you this, but it, you know, it's some, somewhat, it's a game of who you know. Um, you know, I, I'm just being honest with you. I mean, I, I make ClickBank more money than I'd say most anyone. Um, and so I can get by with more <laughs> if I put a video sales letter up, but I don't need to. There's, there's not, there's no any claims that I'm making that are, you know, they, they are, sometimes I don't even look anymore because I'm not going to make any, you know, ridiculous claims. But, you know, that being said, if, if you're a newbie, you're just on ClickBank and you're making claims, then you're going to run into a problem. M meaning that, Hey, here's how, here's how you can lose 30 pounds in the next 10 days. You're going to run into some big problems, but not just with ClickBank with everybody else. So, so yeah. Yeah, and, and Drew said, by the way, for Ann, um, uh, a decent nursing home costs eight thousand a month. Uh, yeah, Drew, uh, man, don't get me started. I, it, you know, <laughs> yeah, it 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 did. It cost more than that. And the one I, uh, for my mom, um, and if it wasn't for my father, thinking way ahead, <laughs> way way ahead, he he had this he had this little nest egg set aside that was for specifically for I forget the name of it now because it's been quite a long time ago, um, for. You know, I you know I wasn't I wasn't uh, I wasn't a wealthy guy back then. So if it wasn't for him setting aside the money to take care, I forget what they call it, but it's and you would know. It's like it takes care of someone for up to a year inside of a nursing home, and um, yeah, <laughs> it was it was uh, my mom lasted a year and, and three months. So um, so anyway, that was after we after I had to put her in the nursing. Home. So yeah. Big, 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 big thing. So, yeah, okay, so, sorry guys, we get on a <laughs> depressing subject here. Um, um, yeah, so Kathleen, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, um, yeah, 20,000 a month, yeah, that's that's what, it was closer to that, yeah. All right, um, hey guys, thanks a lot, by the way, just, this is off the topic of market. Thank you so much for sharing this stuff about um, Drew and Kathleen and Ann and some other people uh, are sharing, hey, here's places that we go for, um, nursing homes and stuff like that. This is important stuff. So we're not just here to talk about marketing. We're all we're all human beings too. So um, you're welcome, man. By the way. Okay. So um, next question. Sharon has a question. Well, Sharon is is um, adding on to what she told you before about her program. She said it's based on her experience for of building up a thirty five million dollar business from scratch, which. Uh, looks like it crashed and then started over again after experiences and learning from Tony Robbins, Signs of Getting Rich, started over back on top and flourishing. Oh, so, wow. Congratulations, Sharon. Um, I, I, well, as you know, I, I know Tony's like, I, I, mean, I don't know if you've heard me say this or not, but I, I say it inside the accelerator, actually. Um, Tony's one of my 
all time heroes. I love Tony uh, as a person and uh, and what he and what he is. Uh, Tony Tony distills more information than any human being I've ever met. I mean, he's capable of you know like taking some of the most profound thoughts and putting them into words that actually move people to do stuff. Uh, he's a master at that stuff, and and I think people expect Tony to be perfect, which pisses me off because no one is. But, um, but yeah, he's a he's an amazing dude. Uh, 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 yeah, science of getting rich, that's awesome too. So, so yeah, if if your program is based on that, um, I one of the biggest. Okay, oh boy, the, I, I could tell you one right now. I mean, I, th I think the stats are three out of four people that are millionaires lose, go broke. I think it's three or four times before they figure out how to keep it. It's like it's like a lot. It's like more than you think. So one of the biggest lies is that once you achieve wealth, you, you keep wealth. Uh, just start making money and you'll be fine. Um, that's not what it is. And that's why you actually have to love what you do. If you didn't love that $35 million business and, and, and crashed, you would just d ditch it, right? But if you love what you, obviously you loved what you did enough to get, not only get back on the horse, but also get back to thriving again, um, I'd say that's that's a huge lie. And that that, you know, that villain again. I hate. I hate to keep using media, but it's all. It, it, it's a good default one. I mean, how many times do you see in the media, and especially on these reality TV shows, you know, that they show, you know, the Real Housewives of Dallas or whatever the hell they're showing these very, you know, wealthy people, and they, it just—it's almost as if they, they just the wealth just kind of came into their lives and it's effortlessly there, and it's like and I'm sure they go into. I don't watch it, so I don't know, but they, they, might, they might go into some drama. But there's a lot of TV shows, a lot of movies that just basically paint wealthy people. Uh, that own a thirty-five million dollar business as you know, snobby and, and um, you know workaholics and you know, or that they get the money and then they just they they're just you know play around and it, I would I would talk about that. Um, I would talk about the you know just the challenges that that it takes to you know to to really make it and the lies that 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 people you know, a lot of lies in the business world. One of the biggest one is you know I, I hear this all the time. It's like, oh yeah, well you know it's easy for you to say you're a millionaire. Uh, it's like. Dude, it's the same problems with at different zeros. In fact, in, I, I, I'm going to quote Tony. It's like the, the difference is that you can arrive at your problems in style. One of my favorite Tony quotes. That's the difference between wealth and poverty. You can arrive at your problems in style. You have the same problems. In fact, you have often you have more problems. Um, you can just arrive at them in, in a, an element of style. Um, but yeah, it's the, so I would go into that, that whole dismantling the whole concept of it's bad to be wealthy. Um, or because I can tell you flat out, Sharon, after talking to thousands and thousands of marketers, and I, I preach this subject on a soapbox, man, people are not only afraid of selling, they're afraid of wealth. Uh, they're, they are deathly, they're, I, I mean, I think entrepreneurs get into it for the same reason psychologists and psychiatrists get into therapy, because they were pretty screwed up themselves. Most every psychologist will tell you this, a psychiatrist, they'll say, yeah, I was really fucked up. I was really, that's why I got into this is because I was really messed up. Well, that's who you want talking to you, right? You want someone that's gone through their own stuff, not someone that's just kind of, you know, cookie cutter right out of the box, right? The same thing with, with, you know, entrepreneurs, they're scared of wealth. They're scared of going broke. They're scared of, they have a, they have a, in my opinion, a very negative association with money. You know, alcoholism is defined as, as a, as a, uh, as a non-constructive association or relationship with alcohol. That's all it is. Right. When people say I'm an alcoholic, they think, oh, well, then you drink a bottle of Jack Daniels a day. No, you could just drink infrequently, but you have an improper relationship with it. So you crave it or or you have to drink 18 shots instead of one. You know, that's alcoholism. Right. The same thing is true. Like, I, I think you could coin a term here. You know, are you, are, are you a brokeaholic? You know, are, are you addicted to being broke? You know, <laughs> you know, a brokeaholic. I mean, you know, this is a people who have a negative association with money. They think money is the money is the root of all evil. They think that. Uh, um, I think that you know it, it, when I make more money, I'm going to uh, my life is going to be tied up. I'm not going to be free anymore. I'm going to be have all these responsibilities. Uh, you know, I heard one guy tell me, and I kid you not, Sharon. I heard one guy say, "I don't want to be a millionaire because I don't want to pay those taxes." And I just looked at the guy and go, "So your solution is to be poor so you don't pay taxes?" I, that was his solution. Uh, you know, hopefully you're laughing right now. I mean, it's like, yeah, that's a solution. I'm going, look, dude, I, you know, I, 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 I my uncle, this is a true story. My uncle, um, <clears throat> he went to jail four times, um, never stayed. He wrote three books long time ago on why the IRS is a completely 
satanic non-government sanctioned body and that you should never pay taxes. Okay. I, look, <laughs> I'm not here to get in that debate. He was kind of a wacky guy. Um, lived in a trailer park, you know, just, just, just kind of this off the grid kind of guy. Um, refused to pay a dime in taxes, right? I just think that's one of the dumbest reasons not to be wealthy I've ever heard. I just don't want to pay taxes. And this guy was, yeah, he was against the government collecting taxes. But also, he just he, he literally told me, I just don't want to write a check for that much money. I'm like, but wouldn't you do that if you get that much more money? That doesn't make any sense. So there's a lot of really dumb stuff out there, Sharon, that I would tackle, man. And that whole brokeaholic thing is pretty good. I just came up with it off the top of my head and right now. And I will give that to you if you want it. Just tell me if it works, because that's pretty damn funny. Uh, are you a brokeaholic? I mean, that could make you that could make you millions right there, Sharon. So don't say don't say accelerator never gave you nothing. Uh, but, <laughs> that's pretty Sharon, good. <laughs> Sharon is saying I'm completely broken up. You're so funny, but seriously, you hit the nail right on the head. And I now realize I was missing that big nail. Awesome. Well, and that's, uh, that's why you're here. Uh, I love it. I say yes. That's right. Well, um, Noah said he's written 10 books on this subject, John. Oh, my gosh. No, awesome. Well, I, I got to gotta connect with me. Let me know uh, some of the books. I, uh, um, and I, I, I'll talk to you off, offline about it, too. Uh, um, and Sharon says, and Tony has the best hugs. Yeah, he does. With hands the size of you know, a batch of watermelons, it, it, it helps. I mean, the guy is huge. Um, he's like six foot forever. And you know, if you've never seen Tony in person, he's a big guy. And uh, um, yeah, he is. He's, uh, what I like about him the most is uh, I, I like his smile, and I also like the fact that that in, in private he swears like he swears to like a sailor on stage. But he really he he has he takes a lot of liberties with the English language. I'll put it that way. Um, and he's funny. He's a funny guy, and and it's so funny because I think people just have totally a lot of people misread him back from the days when he was in his twenties and had all the infomercials. And uh, yeah, but uh, I started my first business because of Tony Robbins, so I will always be grateful. To that. I, I literally quit my job listening to, I'm not getting personal power on a cassette deck. That's how long ago it was. My only corporate job I ever had, I quit cold turkey and decided I'm going to be a graphic designer. I didn't even know what a graphic designer did. I, did, I didn't know. It just sounded really cool. I just said, I'm going to prove that I can be anything I want in the world. I can't draw. I don't own a computer. I don't really even know what this guy does. A gra graphic designer just sounds hot. I'm going to go do it. And the only reason I was that that ballsy is because of Tony freaking Robbins. So yeah, you go, girl. Awesome. So uh, so Olivia's got a question. Oh, that's a great question, Olivia. And Drew, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so right, Drew, you're right on the mark about athletes. I know because I am one. Yeah. Olivia is saying, in which way can Celerator help Kickstarter or Indiegogo crowdfunding? Hmm. Um, I'm in the technology hardware market. Very competitive. Dif difficult to differentiate. Uh, how would I run a VSL before launch, send email series organized in the seller way to way? I'm, I'm not sure about that part of the question. <laughs> yeah. I think I understand the question, Libby. Um, so if, if you're technology hardware and you're saying, I've got this hot new idea for a piece of hardware that will do blank, uh, I'm assuming that's why you would go with Kickstarter because it's something new. Uh, it's something innovative. Um, I, would use, I would use the five-minute VSL version the five minute video, video sales letter formula in Celerator. You don't need to use the full one um, to give someone an overview of it and then send them to the Celerator, to send them to the Kickstarter. And if they don't go to that, at that point, I would say, do you want to watch a longer video about it and then have a full length video sales letter about, again, it wouldn't, you're not selling something, you're selling an idea. So you're selling the, even more than that, you're selling someone to put money in on an idea. And so you're the big hook there is haven't you always wanted this wouldn't it be great if the world had this what would the world look like if, we, if this was possible and you laid out the what would the world look like if this was possible i'm assuming that you've got something really big <laughs> that you could you <laughs> uh, yeah um so yeah something big you know like uh we've we there's been a couple of sales letters uh and i don't i somebody told me about that i never saw them so don't ask i i can't tell you where they are but a friend of mine at, at, at the last traffic conversion said, yeah, um, guy ran a video sales letter to a, a Kickstarter campaign and it wasn't in technology, but and I don't know how long it was, what he did, but he got a lot of people there. I, I think it's a fantastic way to get there rather than just sending them to a Kickstarter page. Because the other thing you can do now is you can fund traffic to this thing. So anyone interested in that specific area of technology, 
you say, and you could even say like, you could put what it is. Like I'm making this up, Olivia, because I don't know what it is. But it's like, um, I have a, you know, uh, uh, this cube, uh, this cube will read all your email for you. You know, this cube will read all your email for you and, and delete all the email you don't want instantaneously. Uh, you know, some something I wish existed. I'm looking at a big piece of silver cube on my desk right now and I wish it would read all my email for me. Uh, so let's pretend that's what you you, you want to create. Uh, the, the, the cube that does away with all junk email, you know, you click on it, you're like, oh, I'd want that, right? And you're going, wouldn't it be awesome if there was a cube this big that could read all your email for you? And, and you see where I'm going with this? Okay, well, it's going to be possible, and here's what I'm going to tell you why it's possible and what we're doing to make it possible. If you want this, block. You know, this is how I'd go with that. So, yeah, Drew says IRS equals mafia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, my, my, my uncle would call him a lot worse than that, but, uh, yeah. Um, uh, we get so, a couple. You know, uh, yeah, Noah said. I, I see. What's what's? Yeah, the, okay. It's not your fault. It's not entirely your fault. Uh, one word. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but okay. So you know how one word can make the difference between night and day. I hate to keep going back to Tony Robbins, but it, I love his distinction. If you don't like Tony, sorry. If you do like him, then you'll get this. I think he's the master at distinctions, and distinctions is simply saying what you already know and just making one twist to it and making it go. Oh my God! Now I get it. And he did this for me with the power of words. Um, when I got into NLP training is when I, I started listening to Tony and he said one word helped change the culture of a group of adamant Christian good family people living in the 1930s that one word in drifting into the 1940s one word was the word holy when Adolf Hitler put the word holy into the phrase we are at war he changed it to we are at a holy war and it changed the paradigm of that culture. And that just sends shockwaves down me, man. It's like, holy crap, that's it. So what is the, the power of one word? Why the change? Because it's not your fault, it takes all the responsibility away. It doesn't the way I did it. It's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. So that's good, that's really good. I just continually you know, update things and change things. And then we just now, I, by the way, just came up with this. We're gonna add, we're gonna change it inside Accelerator uh, next week, as a matter of fact. But, uh, so for now, as I just came up with it not too long ago, it's like, you know, it's not entirely your fault. Or, you know, look, all the stuff you're dealing with, it's not all your fault. You may believe it's all your fault. It's not all your fault. You see what I'm doing? It's not all your fault. The word all or the word entirely is so different. And so, you know, it's not entirely your fault. That that assumes when I say that, that I say, hey, no, it's not entirely your fault that that uh, you didn't, you know, didn't whatever. Then I'm saying it is your fault, but it's not entirely your fault. If I say it's not your fault, then you can take that as I have zero responsibility. And that's why we always say it is now your responsibility. But I love the, look, it's not all your fault. It's not entirely your fault. So check. Yeah, uh, David has a supplement. So he wanted to know who his, um, who his oh, villain. Did we, miss, did we miss you, David? Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, miss... we did. So okay, his, what uh, supplement his... is that, David? Cognitive enhancers specifically. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. I just, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, so get this. Okay. How many times have you heard that? In order to get pick me up, you know, hey, are you feeling are you feeling a little brain fog in the day? Grab a cup of coffee. Uh, take five hour energy. Take something with caffeine in it. Right? How many times have you heard that? How many times have you bought into the lie that in order to wake up you need caffeine? Now, I personally love caffeine. I think caffeine's awesome, but I'm just giving you what I would be saying if I was saying like, look, and I, you can even say that. Look, I enjoy my cup of coffee in the morning too. If you do, you know. But did you realize that they are lying to you when it comes down to what that does to your brain? So that's the big lie. That's where I would go. The big villain is like, yeah, the people, the, the marketers that have been in the commercials that are talking to you about like, you know, this is how you wake your brain up. You wake your brain up by doing something like, you know, by, by coffee. In reality, you wake your brain up through specific nutrients that you're not getting enough of. And here's the really big lie. The reason you're not getting enough of these nutrients is because they've been stripped out of 90% of the foods that we eat. We eat foods that are either GMO foods or we eat foods that have been highly processed or they're very high in starch and very low in nutrients and your brain evolved to need specific nutrients that you can never get unless you supplement. So there you go. I would totally go with that. Um, so uh, <coughs> <stays> there. <coughs> excuse me, if I mispronounce that name, I apologize. Um, 
do I need to believe in that lie? I mean, I, I, I'm just reading his question. I think that if I would be in the place of my prospects, I don't know if I would believe in it. Is it good to put my feet? Yes, it's completely good. Yeah, you need to believe the lie. Absolutely. Like, if you don't believe the lie, there is a way around that and it stays within your ethical bounds. And I'll tell you what it is. You know, you, you, this is what you say. So many people that I've spoken to over the years believe that the number one thing holding them back from blank is X. Then you can tell that, you know what? That's a lie. <laughs> so you can tell them the truth. So tell, so your lie could be what other people believe. In other words, you're asking me, do I need to believe in that lie? No, you can actually state it and state that it's a lie. Isn't that cool? So that can be your lie. This is what people falsely believe is the reason for that the, they're not achieving blank, whatever blank is. They believe they 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 believe this. And, and guess what? They've been told a lie. I'm here to tell you the truth. And all of a sudden you became the hero. Okay, so Cesar, uh, can you I need to elaborate the big lie? Um I don't understand that. If you could be more specific, I can answer that before we sign off. We get five more minutes. Okay, uh, Caesar. Um, I sell a protein shake. The USP is the most healthy because it's grass fed. However, in my research, most important for people is to eliminate the crafts. Let me. Let me uh, okay. Yeah, please do because I don't know what you mean by eliminate the crafts. Um, I'm not sure. There could be a, a language barrier here, my friend. Um, I do know quite a bit about that market. I've written three video sales letters in the past six months for protein shakes. So it is something that I know a little bit about. I can tell you, let me give you one tip uh, right now. It's hard as hell to sell them. Um, it's very difficult to sell a protein shake. Um, if it's a meal replacement, it's a lot easier than protein. Um, grass fed is very important. Obviously all these were grass fed. Um, and what we found out is that as a front end, they're very difficult. My high recommendation to you, Cesar, if at all possible, unless you've got this down, then hey, kudos to you because I couldn't crack the code. Uh, we did it, we killed it on a, as an upsell. So they bought a book and then it came with, the, it, hey, now that you got this book, you really need this protein. Yeah. So if you're doing this and, and it doesn't work, please try a digital front end, like a, a diet, a recipe book, and the recipe books happen to contain, you know, the protein that you that you do. So that's awesome. So last question, Jeff says, talk about upsells was makes a good one. How many should we have? Um, the best upsells that you can have are upsells that are complementary and accelerating to the process. So by far, away, how many should you have? As many as you can. <laughs> but I, I like to have two or three. Um, but my friend uh, Bedros Killian had five, and they were all the same thing. He sold a recipe book on the front end, and the first upsell was recipe. The second upsell was recipe. The third upsell was recipes, and it worked. Um, Gary Halbert's fam favorite supplement trick, and, and Caesar, you might want to know this: uh, if they buy if they buy a weight loss pill, the first upsell is a weight loss pill. The second upsell is a weight loss pill. The third, but he didn't do his upsells. He did them a month later. So a month later, he goes, "Hey, if you like this pill, you're going to love this pill." Now, they, he, I don't believe in weight loss pills. I'm just telling you what he did for marketing. Okay. Um, the idea is that those are completely complementary and acceleration based, okay? If you wanna go even faster, do it this way. So the best upsells are, listen, you 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 need to say this, Jeff, and I talk about this in the upsell formula. If you don't have it, you need to buy, it's cheap. I, I totally get it. But upsell formula talks all about this, but I'll give it to you the, in a brief nutshell. Um, you just bought fill in the blank, and congratulations. You hardly, anyone takes action. You are one of the few people that, that really takes action and that means you're gonna succeed in a massive way. You've got everything in your hands that you need to really get started and get, notice my language, to get started on your way to achieving goal, goal, and goal. However, let me just share something with you that may make it a lot easier. You know, a lot of my customers ask me, David, whoever, whatever, Jeff, excuse me, Jeff, how can I make this I love this concept. I haven't seen good results, but I want to see faster results. Can you make it easier? I've got to figure out a way to make it easier. And this is something you can add to your order today. But notice how I congratulated them on their order right off the bat. Said, hey, you've got what you need to get started. You've got what you need to get start seeing results. If you want to go faster, <laughs> do you see that's completely different than what a lot of people do in upsells, which is like, um, hey, uh, this is John. you might also want to buy this this thing that does almost the same thing as the other thing does, or this thing that does something totally different. You know, so the worst upsell I know because I did it when I first started marketing is to sell a diet book and go, oh, you got you into dieting, you're going to definitely want to work out. <laughs> uh, didn't work. It didn't work. A diet book would work better as an upsell for a diet book. 
So what we do now for diet books, for example, is we'll do a diet book and then we'll do a smoothie recipe guide. Then we'll do a dessert recipe guide. Then we'll do, it just, this just works, you know, it works really, really well. So awesome. Um, so guys, again, thank you. When I say guys, I mean guys and guys. Um, we're, we're all inclusive here. Uh, thank you so much for another lively, awesome, uh, but we had a great conversation. How many of you guys enjoyed it? Awesome. Just say thank you if you if you dug it, if you got a lot out of it, say thanks. I'd love it. Uh, love to get your feedback. Um, I always try to over deliver. Hopefully we did over deliver. And next week, uh, Leanne will set that up and send that invitation out to all of you. Next week, we're going to be talking about the bigger solution and going through some really cool stuff there. Uh, making sure that you got the concepts of the bigger solutions and we're big 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 thing here is the tip formula going through the tips and I am going to change one thing I'm going to change one thing. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you for these kind words. I really appreciate it um, uh, <clears throat> So we're gonna change one thing. It's gonna be very very big uh, I think it's really important and that is the concept of emphasizing again the one thing We kind of hinted at it today, but you want to do this in your tips. There's one thing if you do this one thing It's gonna change it's going to change everything, everything. And that one concept thing, you could, people can latch on to one thing. Now, I'm going to give you three quick tips, but the one thing you're going to want to do is then that last tip, and that one thing is your trademark term. But I want to talk about that more next week. So thank you again for attending. You guys are awesome. And love to. Uh, please feel free to leave feedback in the copy posse too so that we can get even more people on here. Hey, uh, yeah, just uh, it, it, if you got anything good out of it, please say so in the copy posse. And I will see you guys there, and we'll definitely talk to you next week.